right, so in today's video, I'm going to be comparing the new MacBook Air versus the new iPad Pro. And I know in terms of performance, the iPad Pro, Pro blows the MacBook Air out of the water, but I think since they are so close to the same price range, people might be looking to consider both these products. I have done separate reviews of both of these on my channel, so if you want to see that, I'll have it linked above. And if you wanna see more tech content, please make sure to subscribe. And let's get into the comparison. So in terms of form factor, um, the biggest difference is that the MacBook Air is a traditional laptop and the iPad Pro is a tablet, but with the slim folio and whatnot, you can get this to become a laptop in a sense. So what's really nice about the iPad is I would say it's even more versatile than the iPad, or it's more versatile than the MacBook Air. And you pretty much can use it in any orientation you want, but when you want to use it with the keyboard, it has to stay in the landscape uh, position. So in terms of build quality, they are both aluminum, and I would say that the iPad Pro, it might be deceiving, but is a, it is a lot lighter than what most people think it is. And I think even with the case, it might just be a tad bit heavier than the MacBook Air. And I do have the 11 inch because personally, I think the 11 inch is a lot easier to hold in the hand and it's just a lot easier to carry around. Now moving on to price, the MacBook Air starts at $999 and the 11 inch starts at $799. If you do wanna get the bigger version of the iPad Pro 12.9 inch, it does start at $999. But like I said before, I think the 11 inch is a better sweet spot for most people. Um, when you add in all the accessories though, the iPad Pro does get a little bit more expensive. So I just use a regular Bluetooth mouse. This is like 15 bucks. And then I have the Logitech Slim Folio, which was like 115. And altogether, it comes out to be around $1,100. But if you want to use the Apple accessories, so if you want to use their new um, Magic Keyboard Slim Folio, um, you're going to be paying for upwards to $1,200. So just keep that in mind if you want to elect to get the Apple branded accessories for the iPad Pro. Moving on to CPU and RAM. So inside the MacBook Air, we have the 10th generation Intel processors, specifically in this one, I have the i5. And then in the iPad Pro, we have the A12Z Bionic chip. And this one has eight gigabytes of memory. And then this one, the iPad Pro has uh, six gigabytes of memory. Um, in terms of the ports, we have two USB-C ports that work as Thunderbolt 3. And then on the iPad Pro, we only have one single USB port, which is a little bit unfortunate, but with the new Magic Keyboard that's coming out later in May, you'll have an extra USB port that will be passed through. But it, you have, guys have to remember that one's going to be Apple exclusive. Moving on to displays, um, the only thing I will say, I think the iPad Pro has the superior display saying that first, but when watching back YouTube, it seems a little bit blurry and grainy, and I don't know why that is. It's only in the YouTube app. So if you watch a lot of YouTube content, I will say you should probably choose to get the MacBook Air, but the 120 hertz, oops, the 120 hertz that you get on the iPad Pro is just, it's something that, like I said, most people need to experience to understand what a high refresh rate does for your operating system or just the things that you're interfacing with. It really does make things seem a lot faster than what they really are. So you're stuck with 60 hertz on the MacBook Air. Um, but yeah, I would have to give the display over to the iPad Pro. So moving on to the keyboard as well, we have the new Magic Keys on the MacBook Air 2020. They are the same keyboards on the 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro. They're really nice. I actually prefer them more than the iPad Pro. Um, if you don't have the keyboard, you have to use the touch screen, but if you have a Slim Folio, um, I chose the Logitech keyboard or the Slim Folio because I like the more traditional feeling of the keys. Um, I'm not a fan of Apple's Slim Folio case because I don't like their key travel. Um, they are just a little bit hard for me, but for the Logitech one, they're backlit, they're nice. And I think also with this edition as well, the, I just think the Slim Folio from Logitech is a much better product than Apple's. All right, so now I'm going to show you guys a speaker test. And then after that, I will show you an audio and camera test. And you can tell me which one you guys think is better.
All right, and this is the camera quality and internal mics of the MacBook Air. All right, so this is the internal mics and camera quality of the iPad Pro. Video editing is a big thing as well, and I'm not going to edit 4K on here. Um, I will say in the past week and a half, all my videos have been edited on the iPad Pro in 4K. It does it easily and exports it in probably like 10, 15 minutes. Um, but I will say, I will show you guys a clip of both these exporting to 1080p. Um, the iPad Pro obviously destroys it, but I would say that the MacBook Air isn't that far behind. It's only like two to three minutes uh, difference. So if you are exporting um, a lot, it's probably gonna be better for you over time to get the iPad Pro. Just keep in mind that there's no final cut on here and you do have a stripped down version of iMovie. In addition, the iPad Pro has more accessibility to it, so you can use the Apple Pencil to take notes if you don't want to type. Um, it does have mouse and keyboard support, which is nice. Um, it does take a little bit of getting used to, but I think um, people who decide to go forward with the iPad Pro, um, it does take a little bit of a learning curve with the gestures, but um, the mouse and keyboard support are nice. So now going into the software, which I think is the biggest difference between these two, um, I won't go into too much detail about iPad OS, just know that it's a very different experience than your traditional desktop operating system. But you can get away with doing stuff on the iPad Pro. The App Store is still one of the best when it comes to the tablet industry. Um, if you can't do stuff within an, an app inside the App Store, you can just always do it through the browser if the program you're using offers it in the browser because I have found that in some Google Docs, Google Sheets inside the app, um, some of those features are missing, so I have to go to the browser version for that. So if you are picking up the iPad Pro, please make sure that your applications are in fact on here. So I'll say that macOS and just Windows and just desktop operating systems are functionality better than the iPad Pro at this point in time. But if you don't need the full desktop operating system and you can get away with using um, the browser and apps within the App Store, you can definitely use the iPad Pro as your mobile device. Which one would I personally use? Well, since I'm a software developer, it, it's kind of a no-brainer to me. I have to get macOS just because of the things that I use, like Docker, Anaconda, and if you do code in Xcode, then you have to get the MacBook Air. There's pretty much no choice. So personally for me, that's what I would go to. And personally, I just enjoy the desktop experience in a laptop rather than iPad OS. What do I recommend? I know this kind of sucks because I'm not giving you a straight up answer because it depends. So if you need Mac OS, the desktop stuff, then you have to get Mac OS. But if you can survive, like I said before, on the iPad OS operating system and the App Store web browsers and you do um, minimal stuff, but you can also leverage the power of the A12Z Bionic chip, then go with the iPad Pro. I think you just get a lot more value out of it if you do get the 11 inch over the MacBook Air. But if you do need those desktop grade applications, then the MacBook Air is pretty much the only choice for you at this price range. So that's gonna do it for me today, guys. If you like the content, please make sure to like it, subscribe for more tech content, and I'll see you in the next one. Much love. Thank you.